There are two ways that wounds can heal. And these are called primary healing and secondary healing. Sometimes we call it healing by primary intention or primary intent or healing by secondary intention that is healing by secondary intent. So we can have primary healing or we can have secondary healing. What do we mean by these terms? Well in primary healing we approximate the edges of the wound so that one cut edge or one damaged edge of the wound is in essentially direct contact with the other injured wound surface. They're either together or we bring them together. And this means that healing can occur one cut surface directly into another. There can be healing directly, healing by primary intention. So if we think about an injury, here's the surface of the skin, maybe a cut with a, a knife or a sharp object or a surgical incision. So that could be the epidermis there, maybe the dermis there. We've got a reasonably straightforward cut. Now, of course, we need to assess the wound to make sure that the wound is clean and that there are no foreign bodies in the wound and that there's no significant risk of infection or necrotic material in the wound. Now, if those criteria are met, then simply we can approximate the two edges of the wound. We can just close it up so that they're in contact with each other. And then the two healed, the two cut edges can just heal directly into each other. So after we've assessed this wound, cleaned it as necessary, the situation should be like this. So there's the surface of the skin. Here's the edges of the wound that we've now approximated together. Epidermis, dermis. The wounds of the edges are now, the, ed the wound edges are now together and can heal directly into each other by primary intention. Of course, we can help this process. We can bring the wound edges together and hold them together. And in most simple injuries, we, we can do that. Most simple incised wounds, most cuts, we can just bring them together. And you might want to put in a stitch. And here's the suture. which is holding that wound together. Or alternatively, you might get away with simply using some super glue, holding the edges of the wound together, telling the patient it's going to sting for a brief period of time and putting some super glue on the top. Or you might want to use steri strips to hold the wound edges together to allow healing by primary intention. This is the best way for wounds to heal. And the advantages are fairly obvious. You're going to end up with a small scar. That's going to give you good functional and cosmetic results. It's going to work better. It's going to look better. The healing is going to be relatively rapid. Typically, we can take sutures out after seven days, 10 days, maybe slightly more if it's somewhere like a back or a foot. But basically the wound is going to be fairly well healed over within about 10 days. And we don't need to intervene further. All we need to do is take the stitch out and then we're left with a, a healed wound, which is good. The wound will go on maturing and getting stronger for quite a long time. But there's a lot of advantages to primary intention. So we want to use this where we can. But sometimes we don't want to use primary intention. For example, if there's foreign material in the wound that we maybe can't readily get out, or if there's bacterial infection in the wound that we can't necessarily wash away with an irrigating solution, or if there's areas of the wound which as a result of the trauma have been necrosed, then we may decide it's inappropriate to close the wound at that time. So in some situations, we might not want to use primary intention. And the main reason we might not use it is because of the risk of infection.
if there's a risk of infection, we may choose not to use it. Otherwise, basically, we're going to use primary healing. Because if you think about it, if there's infection or foreign material which attracts infection down in the wound, then that infection can't readily escape. And this is particularly a risk with anaerobic bacteria that are no longer in are no longer exposed to surface oxygen. They, they can grow inside the wound. So if we've closed infection in a wound, we've actually promoted the conditions where that infection can flourish and the infection can get worse. There could be chronic inflammation, abscess and pus formation is possible. And we could actually end up with a much worse wound than the one we actually started with. This could actually break out onto the surface and really make quite a mess. It could complicate it. But the vast majority of wounds that you're going to deal with, hopefully they're going to be relatively clean. They can be closed by primary intention. And we can expect fairly rapid, efficient wound healing with good functional and cosmetic results. But now we've established that there's some wounds that we shouldn't close because there's an infection risk. Other wounds, of course, we can't close because there's too much tissue loss. So other wounds, we could have tissue loss. And there's the surface of the skin. This patient's lost a substantial amount of tissue as a result of the injury, meaning we cannot approximate the wound edges. It can't be done. It's a tissue loss injury. And in this case, we have to leave the wound open and we have to allow healing by the process of granulation. And granulation will occur from the edges of the wound hopefully progressing to fill up the wound cavity. Granulation tissue is a temporary sort of filling tissue. Hopefully it's going to fill up the wound with granulation tissue. Sometimes while this is happening, we have to pack the wound to facilitate this process of granulation, especially if there's a wound like a, a sinus type of wound. So if we have a sinus type of wound like this, as you might get for example with a deep pressure sore, we have to pack it so that the wound can heal and granulate from the bottom upwards. Because in this sort of wound, what we don't want is healing to occur over the surface first. That might look good for a few days, but there's going to be bacteria and the risk of infection in here. So we have to pack it to let the wound heal gradually from the bottom up. And hopefully every time we pack the wound, we're using less packing because the wound is gradually healing. So healing by secondary intention, we should use this when we cannot approximate the wound edges or when we should not approximate the wound edges because of infection risk. Now, the advantage of this is that the wound is open, so if any infection or necrotic tissue presents, it can be removed, we can debride necrotic tissue. We have access to the wound and we can control the infection. The infection is not closed in the wound. So the big advantage of this is that we're hopefully going to prevent wound infection. The disadvantages are obvious. It's going to take ages for these wounds to heal. Sometimes you can be redressing granulating wounds for days, weeks, months. It can be a long process. As healing develops, a lot of the granulation tissue will actually accumulate more and more collagen fibers. Collagen fibers form scar tissue, fibrous scar tissue, and we can end up with a lot of 
fibrous scar tissue in the wound. And this is going to have poor cosmetic results. You're going to have a large scar. It's going to have poor functional results. Because the fibrous tissue is an excellent patch, but it doesn't actually do anything. So you're going to get poor functional results as well. So yes, we need to use this sometimes for infection risk and tissue loss, but we know it's going to be a longer process. We know there's going to be poorer functional and cosmetic results. So really, there's only two ways that wounds can heal, primary intent, secondary intent. Now we can actually include a third classification. And the third classification is DPC, delayed primary closure. We can have a delayed primary closure. So we could be in a situation, especially with a traumatic type of wound, where we have, um, we have a wound here. Here's our wound. <clears throat> and we revisit this wound over a few days to clean it to debride necrotic tissue. And then we can do a delayed primary closure. Now in this case, we've got a tissue loss wound. So the delayed primary closure would probably be skin grafting. So we get this wound nice and clean for a few days. Then when we've got a clean wound surface, we can put clean skin graft on top of that and hopefully we'll get primary healing between the injured surface and the bottom of the skin graft. Or other times they could be more incised types of wounds, particularly high energy wounds, military wounds for example, caused by a lot of force, gunshot wounds or falls from a height or road traffic accidents, where we're unsure about the nature of infection or necrotic tissue in this wound. So we can pack it for a few days, we can remove necrotic tissue, we can get it nice and clean using cleaning solutions or antibiotics or whatever it takes to get it clean. And then when it's finally clean, we can close it using the primary closure. And then in that situation, we've got the wound edges together now. Hopefully we're going to get a healthy primary closure. So that will be a delayed primary closure. We're still using primary intention, but that is delayed until the wound is clean enough and viable enough to facilitate that process of primary closure. So all the wounds you're going to treat now for the rest of your career, you're either going to be using primary intent, secondary intent, or delayed primary closures. I think that pretty well covers the three approaches that we can take to facilitating the physiological process of wound healing.